All right, welcome to this week's uh, podcast. This week we got Jeff Lordson. He's a local professional. He's the man. Um, and love to hear his story and why he decided to stay in Des Moines and work in Des Moines. And um, But uh, without further ado, Jeff, yeah. welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. So love to um, jump right in. So tell us about yourself, um, where you work, and... Yes. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Um, I'm the the sports coordinator at the Waukee YMCA. Um, you could probably say the the YMCA of Greater Des Moines. Uh, we're starting to branch out a little bit and, and get some sports at, at other branches. So I'm kind of uh, expanding my footprint a little bit and, and outside of just Waukee. So that's great. Um, you know, we're doing some stuff at some other branches. So awesome. No, it's big time. So tell us about um, the why. Like so. Um, why has been around a long time. Yes, 150 years. 150. Here in okay. Yes. Jeez. Yeah. So, um, I have a client right now. They want to be close to a Y. And so, yeah, tell us a little bit more about the Central Iowa Y sure. scene. Yeah. Yeah. There's uh, there's six metro locations. So there's Waukee. Um, mm-hmm. There's Walnut Creek there in the West Des Moines Winter Heights area. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a South Side Des Moines. There's a Downtown Des Moines. Yep. Uh, Grub on the North Side. Mm-hmm. Um, and then down in Indianola, there's a, a pretty new facility down yeah. there. Um, we've also got the supporting house of campus, which, okay. uh, um, helps with, um, homeless, uh, or people trying to transition, uh, you know, from being homeless back into society. Um, so kind of low rent apartments that we rent out to those people, um, that they stay anywhere from, you know, a couple months to a couple of years uh, at, at that place. So help them get back on their feet. And then we've also got the Boone Y camp up in, okay. uh, up in Boone, north of Boone there. Mm-hmm. So, um, a lot of different options for, um, what each branch offers, um, you know, mm-hmm. you've kind of got the big branches, which, you know, kind of Walnut Creek, Waukee, mm-hmm. downtown, big, a um, lot, lot of space. Then kind of the smaller neighborhood ones, which are Grub, um, mm-hmm. South Side, and uh, Indianola is kind of in between there where the yeah. new building, a little mm-hmm. smaller, but uh, yeah. good good addition to the community. Awesome. One of the questions I asked uh, the guest on the podcast is, how do you end up in this position? Was kind of sports management kind of something you've been interested in throughout your life, or yeah, how what has been kind of your career trajectory? I guess. Yeah, um, you know, I grew up playing all sorts of sports, mm-hmm. uh, you know, basketball and soccer and baseball and football and all sorts of things. And you know, yeah. when you when you grow up doing that, that's something you obviously enjoy doing. So mm-hmm. if you can transition and and hopefully turn that into a career, yeah. um, you know, it feels less like work um, oh, as opposed sure. to you know just pushing papers at, at, mm-hmm. at a, a, a business. So yeah, um, you know. When I when I got out of high school, um, I had the opportunity to go play a couple of years of junior college basketball right. uh, down at uh, Southwestern Community College in Creston. Mm-hmm. Uh, went down there, uh, you know, didn't really know what I wanted to do with myself, uh, sure. so I got my uh, associate of arts degree, mm-hmm. uh, which really is kind of getting your gen eds out of the way, yeah. uh, helping you transition to that four year. Uh, school. So I mm-hmm. uh, got done at Southwestern, uh, went over to the University of Iowa. And, uh, you know, I started out as a, as a business major. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I had two years of foreign language in high school. That's all you needed for a business degree. Yeah. So uh, thought, you know, I'd try to skip the foreign language and just go business. Mm-hmm. Um, after a semester of doing that, I decided that, you know, that wasn't what I wanted to do with my yeah. life and my career. So I wanted to find something that was, you know, a little more of a passion as opposed to sure. a job. So yep. um, after that first semester, I, I dove in a little bit more, found out about the rec management program at okay. the University of Iowa. Um, ended up majoring in rec management, um, graduated in uh, the summer of 2009 from mm-hmm. the University of Iowa. And then uh, my first job was uh, with Des Moines Parks and Rec here okay. in town. So yeah. that's kind of how I made that transition uh, you know, from Iowa City over here to Des Moines. Um, originally from the Ames area, went to Gilbert High School, so it's not, not too far away yeah. from, from home as well. So um, worked in the Parks and Rec Department for about five years and then uh, kind of transitioned over to the Y uh, after about those five years. So. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I didn't realize there's a major at, at uh, University of Iowa. Yep, yep. Yeah. there's a, a sports and recreation uh, management major mm-hmm. at the University of Iowa. So yeah, there's pretty a solid program there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's um, you got to do a lot of managing yeah, yes, right yeah, now. Yeah, absolutely. So tell us about what's going on with sports right now, um, what you're working on yeah. uh, this season. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right now, uh, we're kind of wrapping up the fall sports. Um, mm-hmm. So we've wrapped up soccer, 
Um, we've got our fall basketball clinics that are ending this week. Oh, wow. Um, okay. Volleyball leagues that are ending this week. Um, we've got a couple weeks of flag football left. Yeah. Um, and then uh, we're getting into basketball season. So um, our basketball deadline um, was Monday, yesterday. So oh, okay. Um, if, but if somebody still wants to get in, we could maybe work them into a, a spot if we have an opening. Sure. Um, but we also do have a second season of basketball. So okay. that opens December 1st. So yeah. um, if they want to play February, March uh, yeah. a season, uh, then we've got a, a second season season of basketball as well that, that'll open up december 1st so yeah and we're rolling out something new this year it's a high school basketball league oh really um, okay yeah yeah so they kind of had that they ran that through the grub ymca mm-hmm. we're trying to expand that to maybe more of the west side yeah um suburb of the area while still um having that that solid league that we had um at grub they had about 35 teams last year for yeah. high school kids so oh, wow. um, we're trying to expand the high school league as well so that registration is yeah. open now if somebody has a high school kid that's not on their high school basketball team yeah. that still wants to Get out, play basketball with their friends. They sign up, and uh, they'll have certified refs and and score scorekeepers and and scoreboards and and the whole whole nine yards for a, a quality basketball game. Do you think I could pass as a high school <laughs> player right now as a thirty three year old man? Yeah, uh, potentially. Yeah, yeah yes, right. yeah. You're still still looking pretty young. So got, you yeah, got it. That's right. Throw my I gained a little bit of weight since high school. Uh, yeah, lost happens. a few steps, it but to all of us. losing some hair. So um, I think <laughs> that'd be pretty funny <laughs> to think about. That's really awesome, though, for high school. Yes. Because Des Moines, there's a lot of big high schools, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of really talented high school basketball teams. Mm-hmm. And in basketball, you usually play seven to eight players. So yep. it's really hard um, to really – you gotta be like really one of the better players players in the state of Iowa to even play on these yeah. high school teams. So that's yep. great that there's that yeah. rec league. And, and that that's our thought is, you know, mm-hmm. kids still enjoy basketball, but they might not be, you know, one of the ten or twelve best players yeah. at, at these giant high schools. Mm-hmm. So um, we'll get multiple teams from from various high schools. You know, we'll yeah. get ten teams from Dowling mm-hmm. um, because there's mm-hmm. just so many kids that um, you know want to play basketball, but there's only X amount of spots mm-hmm. on these teams. So um, we'll try to get those kids involved in programs. Um, you know, obviously mm-hmm. we're, we're out there to get programs in the community, get kids involved, uh, give them a positive place to, you know, interact with other kids from around the city. Yeah. Um, while still being active and, uh, yeah. you know, get some exercise. That's really great. And then, um, so last year there was 35 kids or 35 teams mm-hmm. at the grub Y and you're trying to expand it. So yep. that's awesome. That's a really good, really, really neat thing that that's included for high schoolers mm-hmm. because, um, yeah, when I was in high school, I, I was fortunate enough to be on a team and able to play, but I had a lot of friends that didn't make the team or whatnot. Yep. And so I think it's a great, great, um, great thing that yeah. it, goes, it goes all the way to 18. Yeah. For yeah. Kids, so, and, yeah. you know, coming from a smaller town um, and going to Gilbert High mm-hmm. School, which was, you know, a 2A school, it yeah. was one of those things that, you know, if you wanted to be on the team, you were essentially on the team. Yeah. Uh, just because there weren't, uh, you know, a ton of kids that were going out for mm-hmm. various sports and you just yeah. didn't have the numbers that you do at a Johnston mm-hmm. or a Valley or yeah. a Waukee. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, when you've only got a certain amount of spots, we're trying to offer an alternative program for yeah. those kids that still want to play and still want to, you know, get that competitive nature um, mm-hmm. that they're they're missing out on, and uh, you know, just trying to fill that void. We we don't serve a whole lot of high school mm-hmm. programs, so we're trying to expand into that a little bit because we know yeah. there is a need in the community for those kids to have mm-hmm. positive uh, programs as well. Mm-hmm. Is the why is that considered a nonprofit essentially, or yes, is that, yep, is that the YMCA is a, a nonprofit organization. So mm-hmm. um, we get a lot of our uh, revenue is from donations and program yeah. fees. Um, mm-hmm. So. Um, you know, not getting too deep on the the, the tax information yeah, and all high, that stuff. Yeah, high level. Um, yeah. mm-hmm. But you know, you need to have a certain amount of of money coming from uh, certain revenue streams to, yeah. to be a nonprofit. So yeah. we focus on keeping those re- uh, program revenues up because that's one of the ways that we yeah. keep that nonprofit status. Yeah. Is, uh, is making sure that we still have uh, quality programming and. You know, the Waukee branch is, is great about offering a lot of different programs, yeah. you know, a, a ton of swim lessons, a ton of youth sports, a ton of other youth programs. Um, so just a lot of, of varying options mm-hmm. for, for kids and families in the area. Do you have to be a member of the Y to play in these youth sports? No, okay. no. Uh, you can mm-hmm. be a, a non-member. Um, yeah. So there's just a little bit of a fee increase if you're a non-member. Yep. Um, so a little bit of a benefit if you are a member. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I would say 99% of our programs are open to members and non-members. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Occasionally, there's some very popular programs that we just limit to, to yeah. members. But mm-hmm. like I said, probably 99% of the programs yeah. anybody can sign up for. That's great. Yeah, with the youth too. Because that, even as a parent, I mean, 
I grew up here, so I have some connections. Um, I know my son, Max, he's playing the, in the um, second grade flag football mm-hmm. at the Y. Yep. I think we're 4-1 or something. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. It's second grade football, so oh, it's yeah. fun. No, but he's having a blast, <laughs> and uh, it's just it's fun to see. And But I think moving to the community, um, I think it's – it's a great thing mm-hmm. to have that already set up. So yeah. if you're new to the community, I mean, you can get connected yep. really quickly, especially with kids sports. So yeah. 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 The YMCA is a great place, you know, for new families or just new individuals yeah. in the community to come, you know, get a membership. You know, I think, you know, don't want to toot our own horn too much, but yeah. you know, I think we're pretty friendly. Uh, the front desk is friendly. You're going to come in, you're going to find a great environment to, mm-hmm. uh, you know, just meet new people, uh, get into a positive situation yeah. and make sure, um, you know, whatever your goals might be, that might be exercise goals. That might be mm-hmm. social goals. That might be, you yeah. know, meeting new people, making new friends. I think you can do all that stuff at the YMCA. Yeah. Um, you know, whether it's one or, or all of those things. Mm-hmm. So, um, and you can do that really in any capacity, whether that's youth sports, you're going to meet new kids mm-hmm. from around the community, meet a new coach, you know, play against kids from around, uh, the area, mm-hmm. you know, or if that's, uh, you know, just coming and exercising, you come find a new, new group of people, you know, maybe meet yeah. some new, new people, go to a group exercise class, mm-hmm. find people with uh, similar interests and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, build that relationship where you've got some accountability where, you know, you don't show up on Tuesday. People might text you and say, yeah. you know, Hey Jason, you weren't in yeah. class today, Tuesday, mm-hmm. what's going on? You Happens know, too often you know, for me. Yeah. A little <laughs> bit of a peer pressure to get you to yeah. come to class next yeah. time, you know, mm-hmm. and then have that accountability for, uh, for mm-hmm. showing up and, uh, you know, getting your workout in. Yeah, for sure. And so then, yeah, as when you're a member, there are workout classes mm-hmm. or like, yeah, which is pretty neat. Yeah. yeah. So there's all across the board that those are options there. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, when, with your membership, obviously there's, there's weights and treadmills and yeah. open swim and, you know, if you want to come shoot baskets, things like that. But there's also, um, you know, multiple group fitness and group yeah. fitness classes each day. Yeah. Um, and then there's also water aerobics classes as well. Mm-hmm. So you can get in the pool a little more low impact. Sure. Uh, you know, if you've got knee problem, joint problems, getting in the pools, yeah. uh, a good way to help those joints, um, not put so much impact on yeah. there, but, um, those group fitness classes are great. You know, we've got them early in the morning. We've got them late at night. We've got mm-hmm. them over the lunch hour. You know, all all sorts of times, all sorts of different levels mm-hmm. of uh, of group fitness classes as well. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, whatever you're kind of looking for, uh, you can kind of find a class that fits your needs. Yeah. And like I said, you show up to that class, and the people are going to be, you know. F- uh, very friendly to you. Yeah. You're gonna, you know, hey, I'm Jeff. Nice to meet you. Yeah. You know, can I be your partner today? Yeah. The instructor is gonna be really uh, friendly with you. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. um, it's a great, great thing. You know, every once in a while, I can step away from my desk and, and pop into one of those classes and yeah. take it. And mm-hmm. you know, it, it's good. I'm, I'm meeting parents from you know youth sports. Yeah. You know, they come up to me and they know me just because I've been around. Yeah. Um, but it's good to put a face with their name. Yeah. Um, then I kind of build a relationship with them. Yeah. Just, you know, by simply by going to an exercise yeah. class. So. I think it's great. Yeah. Because like Des Moines, you can kind of get lost in the you know in the central Iowa area, depending on how far east, west, south, north you go. But I mean, it's about six hundred thousand mm-hmm. people. And so, if you're new to the community, and the reality is, with this day and age, a lot of um, smaller towns are getting smaller, so people are moving into Des Moines. So I, it seems like the Y would be a great option yep. for um, someone looking for community and get connected. Yeah, yeah. So you don't feel like there's so many people, but if you just go there, you can meet a lot of mm-hmm. neat, absolutely a lot of neat things. Going yeah, on. we. Uh, yeah. Every September we do a, what is called a welcoming week. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's, it's for people that either haven't been to the Y or mm-hmm. immigrants or people yeah. new to the community that yeah. just come to the Y, you know, you can come to the Y, check it out, um, you know, learn more about it. Um, mm-hmm. and I think that's a great example of kind of what the Y stands for, you know, yeah. just kind of an open welcoming environment. Mm-hmm. Um, we want to help the community in any way that we can. Yep. Um, you know, whether that's just giving people a place to go, um, mm-hmm. and have a positive interaction. Yep. Or if it's, you know, helping them meet their fitness or, or wellness goals. Yeah. So um, there's a lot of things that I think you can accomplish at the yeah. YMCA. No, that's really neat. So in regards to kind of give our listeners an idea, um, like from a flag football standpoint, what was roughly the amount of kids, like from a logistics standpoint that you kind of helped manage? Yeah, yeah. Um, we, we have about 500 kids yeah. in our flag football program. Yeah. Um, so I think that came out to about 48, 49 teams Mm -hmm. um, across, you know, three year old to eighth grade. Yeah. Um, So, you know, we'll play for about seven hours a day um, at Valley Stadium, Mm -hmm. um, you know, four fields at a time. So um, you're looking at, you know, 
somewhere around 28 games yeah um, each saturday when we're out there uh playing flight football so you know getting those teams scheduled well you know we're fortunate to have parents uh that want to coach multiple teams yeah um you know so that's kind of a headache when you're doing the yeah. schedules is you know making sure that you know if jason's coaching two teams yeah. that we don't have jason playing at the same time or we For don't sure. have him playing at eight o'clock and two o'clock yeah um you know give him a huge gap in that day so you know just getting all those kids placed on teams getting all the coaches lined up getting the Mm -hmm. schedules done, making sure that, um, you know, everything kind of matches up at the end of the day um, Mm -hmm. is uh, one of the fun and maybe frustrating parts of the job. But um, it certainly keeps you on your toes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've seen all – I mean, with this fall season, I've seen it super hot. Yeah. Or the day's been super hot, and then last week was super cold. Yes. So it's kind of, yeah. Yep, so. that, that's the joys of flag football is yeah. you, you start out in shorts and a T-shirt, and yeah. by the end of the season, you're bundled up in your winter yeah. gear. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's good because you think about if you actually break it down, um, like – 28 games a week, I have a lot of refs. Mm-hmm. At least yep. for second grade, there's two refs per game. Yep. And I'm sure some of them will do multiple sessions or whatever, multiple games. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, it's a whole, like, the why is about, you know, community and helping people have positive experience. Yeah. But a lot of these refs are not professionally trained. Correct. But they do a great job. Correct, yeah. So, we, so. we've kind of got a little training program that we'll yeah. send them through. Yeah. Um, but it's more kind of on-the-job training. We'll yeah. stick them with, you know, somebody who's been mm-hmm. working with the Y for 10 yeah. years, and they'll mm-hmm. kind of learn from them, and we'll mm-hmm. start them at the younger ages, and we'll work, work the way up. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, you mentioned referees and, you know, we pay them a little bit. Yeah. Um, when you're an employee of the Y, you get a free membership to the oh, Y okay. um, yeah. or you get a well, pretty heavily discounted family membership. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, we're always looking for people to come and referee mm-hmm. or, or be site yeah. supervisors or program instructors or yeah. any number of positions at the Y. Yeah. So, um, you know, if people wanted to work for the Y, we're always looking for part-time help. It's always mm-hmm. a flexible, flexible environment. So, yeah, um, I think it's so important. I mean, here locally, there's recently an assistant coach that got arrested, mm-hmm. freaking out on a ref. Yes. And and I think I've re- I mean I have refed in the past, and mm-hmm. I think it's important as a dad that um, that you don't get mad at refs. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the, the situation now is just to be, yeah, their goal is to do the best they can. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, yeah, I think as a why, I mean, hearing my hearing what you're saying, like logistically, it's like man, that's a, such a huge endeavor it for, is for the kids to have a good experience so yeah. i think what are some ways parents can help I yes guess, um, in, in yeah. those situations you know, if I'm, you feel a little bit jaded or, yeah. <laughs> yeah obviously if if a parent has any any inkling that they want to coach yeah um, you know reach out to mm-hmm. us you know we'll help you uh have a successful successful experience yeah. coaching yeah um you know whether that's getting you practice plans mm-hmm. getting you trained up getting you you know some online trainings yeah um whatever you might need um you know so we're always looking for volunteer coaches yeah. because because, you know, we are obviously a nonprofit organization. Sure. We don't pay our coaches. We're, we're yeah. trying to look for volunteers. So yeah. um, anytime that a parent wants to coach, we're more than happy to, to help them out in any mm-hmm. way that they, they see fit. So um, then obviously, you know, during the game, you know, not getting on the refs if, oh, if there's a mistake. Yeah. You know, people are human. People people make mistakes. Um, you know, and you got to realize at the end of the day that you know we're out here trying to just teach the kids. Yeah. You know, the fundamentals of the game in a good, positive environment. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, nobody's going to get a college scholarship off mm-hmm. of you know a fourth grade basketball game or That's whatever. Right. So, uh, <laughs> just making sure that your kids are having a positive experience um, because I, I think parents can kind of take that to the next level and if there's a problem the worse they make it uh the kids tend to notice or they feed off of it. yep or or feed off it a little bit so um if if the parents can help bring that situation down a little bit and you know knock on wood we don't have a whole lot of no not at all parent issues yeah um at at flag football or basketball or soccer more of our team sport type things where we're refereeing but yeah um you know you see it on the news that you know the more competitive leagues out there do tend to have a lot of parents that maybe take a little too serious and and are trying to maybe live through their kids a little bit too much instead of just being spectators (laughs) they're they're trying to be more active in the game which is unfortunate yeah i think it's so important because I, i really appreciate I mean, you see it in the community that the Y continues to invest. You know, you see some facilities getting improved, and and as a church, we've we've volunteered at the YMCA in Windsor Heights and done some work there. But it's good to see there's that reinvestment. Mm-hmm. I think sports are really important, especially with technology nowadays yep. with games. Mm-hmm. 
and um, just the values that are instilled, you know. Yeah. There. So yeah, uh, you know, at the YMCA we've got four core values: so yeah. honesty, caring, respect, responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll go ahead and, and try to teach those to the kids um, when we get them in yeah. clinic settings and we uh, work with them a little more. Um, we'll try to teach those those core values because I, I think those are good life yeah. lessons. Obviously, absolutely. Um, you know, if you can get that. Uh, to the kids at a young age, they're going to be able to hopefully build on that and mm -hmm. become successful adults. So, yeah. um, you know, and then we're also talking about sportsmanship. You know, we've got a little YMCA uh, sports pledge that we do before each game. Yeah. Um, so mm -hmm. it's just a, a good reminder, you know, be respectful to your teammates and opponents and coaches and officials and, yeah. you know, just be out there and, and have a good time, but make sure mm -hmm. you're being respectful to everybody and, and uh, you know, learning those life lessons that I think sports can teach. Yeah. I think it's so important that, um, I mean, I think as a kid playing sports, and now work as a working adult it's just you learn so much mm -hmm. through sports yeah. you know if you and I, i'm a big proponent with my kids at least trying i'm not going to be a psycho dad um, i'm going to i'm going to encourage them to do the best they can listen to their coaches yeah. but that's all i'm going to really ask for mm -hmm. but you think about like uh, cooperation as a team yep. you know with a team sport you learn it as a young child you know when you play that you think about even being competitive is good if it's mm -hmm. uh, if it um, I heard a quote one time, a pastor said, um, competition is God's way of tri tricking us to do our best. So sometimes <laughs> it's like, yeah. you just try your best, you know, when they're, but, and then, you, and then when you learn about sportsmanship, I mean, you learn about, um, you just, so many good life lessons yeah. and also like even just reap what you sow. Yep. So if you're working on your dribbling every day, you can get a little bit better mm -hmm. at the end of the year. So it's, yep. it's such a good thing for children to be a part of. Yeah. You know? Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. You know, I think just. You know, whether it's sportsmanship, teamwork, mm -hmm. um, yeah. you know, social skills, yeah. all those things really, um, you know, bear themselves in, in sports mm -hmm. in ways that, you know, you don't have to sit down and explain it to a child, you know, directly. Yeah. They can learn those things sort mm -hmm. of indirectly, but still yeah. take something away from, hey, when we pass the ball, that's teamwork and sharing and yeah. all these things. And you're not sitting there just lecturing them. Yep. You're sort of teaching them life lessons through other means, mm -hmm. um, which I think is good because I think if you're just going to sit there and lecture a kid, that's not going to yeah. always turn out very well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. um, you know, teaching kids how to, you know, work together, uh, yeah. meet new people, um, you know, just come in, find some new friends, um, yeah. you know, meet people from other schools. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we do the best to, you know, place everybody, you know, with teammates if they have requests mm -hmm. or kids from other schools. But, yeah. you know, sometimes there might be only a couple kids from this school. So we got to put them with kids from the other school. Yeah. And guess what? You know, they, they meet some new people, you know, the yeah. parents meet some new people. So um, I, I think it's a positive thing to kind of get to know people outside of your little bubble yeah. um, in your social circle. Absolutely. And it's kind of one of those things you kind of learn as a kid too, that, even put your personal preference on the side mm -hmm. potentially to achieve something that's bigger than yourself. Yeah. And I think that's really important because that's kind of what the why is trying to do is they're trying to be more rather than just having one good why. Yeah. <laughs> there's several good whys and trying to have a bigger impact on yep. the community. Yeah. You know? And yeah. and we know that I think we're all stronger uh, together yeah. as opposed to small separate groups. Yeah. So, you know, if we can, if we can all band together yeah. um, and whether it's the Waukee Y or the South mm -hmm. Side Y or Indianola or, yeah. or Grub or whatever, if we can all come together and, you know, sort of pull the whole Des Moines Metro yeah. together. Um, I think that's going to be better for the whole yeah. group um, mm -hmm. as opposed to just trying to make one specific branch or a couple yeah. branches, the, mm -hmm. the strong ones. Yeah, I think it's it's important because then through these life lessons, through sports, you can then also, as you get older and more mature, you can kind of adapt it there. Yeah. So because a lot of times it's like, um, yeah, you're going to have to work with people down the road. Mm -hmm. And when you're older, yeah. you kind of learn how to work together. And I think, yeah, it's encouraging to see these things thriving you know sport like at the, the yc mm -hmm. i mean when i go on saturday i mean there's just so many kids and families but it's really neat it's a family effort you see kids working together mm -hmm. it's just a good thing i think for our society yeah you know, yeah see. absolutely so, you know yeah. I, and i think you know just anytime you can get people from different backgrounds different schools different mm -hmm. whatever uh to come together and 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 work together i think you're gonna have a positive outcome yeah so no. you know that that's kind of what we're hoping for at the end of the day is obviously positive outcomes and putting kids mm -hmm. in positive situations yeah. so um you know with basketball season coming up that's our largest group of kids so mm -hmm. we'll have about 650 to 700 at the Waukee branch. We'll have about the same number Oof. at the Walnut Creek branch. We'll have, you know, some more kids at the Grub Y and, and the South Side Y. So, mm -hmm. you know, we're serving, you know, probably close to 2,000 kids yeah. in the metro area through these basketball programs. Mm -hmm. That's just the first season. Mm -hmm. And then you add the second season on there, it's about mm -hmm. the same number. So, 
um, you know, when you're talking that many kids that we're impacting, you know, hopefully we're, we're able to give them a good foundation um, yeah. and, you know, give them a good sports experience, but also a good social experience yeah. as well. Um, yeah. Because, you know, we don't want to just focus on sports because we, there are organizations in the community that are very sports specific mm-hmm. and that's fine. Um, but I think we have kind of a larger goal at the yeah. YMCA as mm-hmm. opposed to just um, wins and losses and, and you know, yeah. stats and points per game and yeah. things like that. For so, sure. um, you know, we try to do our best to progress the kids up through the, the program a little bit, you know, starting out with fun, um, you know, a little more laid back, fundamental type programs and then getting into more. Uh, maybe competitive and keeping score and, yeah. and standings and things yeah. like that as they get older. So mm-hmm. we want to make sure that they get that good base and then they can yeah. uh, progress into maybe more of a, a league atmosphere. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's really cool too because since you start so young and you go all the way through high school, so you could still be in the whole Y system. Mm-hmm. And then, but if you're more, if you're wanting to be more of a uh, cutthroat environment, more specialized yep. environment, then you can, you, like what you're saying, you develop a base and then you have that option yep. down the road. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think we do see a lot of kids, you know, leave and go somewhere else, which is mm-hmm. certainly fine. Yeah. Um, you know, if they want to go play in something more competitive, you know, we definitely price our programs to be more inclusive. Yeah. Uh, we want to make sure that everybody's got an opportunity to play, mm-hmm. um, you know, and even if, you know, they can't afford to play, we have financial assistance um, yeah. available at every branch for the program so they can sign up and get 50% off the program yeah. if they still want to get in. Mm-hmm. So, you know, our goal is to get as many kids involved and to offer a positive experience. You know, we do have teams that leave, which is, like I said, just fine. Yeah. You know, if they want to go and, and play in other leagues. There are teams that probably, honestly, are too good sure. uh, for our leagues. And, and it's not a fun game for them to win by 50. Sure. And it's not fun to lose by 50. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, if we can get the most evenly matched teams, that's always good. Um, yeah. But we have had teams that have left and gone to other leagues. And the next year they've come back yeah, and played with sure. us. So mm-hmm. because they didn't have the, you know, the positive experience sure. that they were getting um through the YMCA, yeah. you know, they, you know, whether it's referees or just league management mm-hmm. or whatever, you know, yeah. they, they came back to the Y. So, mm-hmm. you know, I, I understand when people leave and I don't, I don't fault them for that. And it's always, mm-hmm. always good to see when they come back as well. So. Yeah, for sure. So if I'm a parent listening to this, um, in central Iowa, how do I get my kids signed up? Yeah. Um, yeah. Your best way to find, you know, kind of all the information that we've got at every single Mm -hmm. Y is uh, go and hit up our website, uh, which is Mm -hmm. dmymca.org. And then there's a locations tab. So you can see where all the Ys are located. Uh, You click on each branch, see what they kind of offer. Mm -hmm. Um, And then then you can register online. You can stop by a branch. You can Mm -hmm. give them a call. Yeah. Um, and register over the phone if you want. So mm-hmm. awesome. uh, the website's a great resource just to kind of see what uh, the YMCA has got to offer mm-hmm. at every branch. And yeah. um, you can learn a little more about each branch and, and see what they offer. Yeah, no, that's big time. It's an opportunity for people to, whether their children do it or, yeah, get involved in the community. Yeah. So, yeah, visit, uh, what's the website again? DMYMCA.org. That's right. Jeff, you're the man. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much uh, for coming coming to this podcast. Yeah, happy to be here. Thanks. All right, you're the man.